Hey guys, my name is Jeff and I'm here with Ralph Giels, who is the Chief Design Officer of Stellantis. Now Ralph, you have a very, let's say, storied career so far. You've designed a lot of cars, including some which are in the room with us right now. Would you mind giving a little bit of background of some of the stuff you've worked on and such like yeah. that? Yeah, first of all, it's an honor to be on your show. Uh, thank you very much for taking some time and to hear this out. Uh, yeah, I've been at the company now 32 years, so it's a long time for anybody in any company these days, <laughs> but I've had a lot of fun. Uh, the company, as you know, uh, started off as Chrysler, uh, it was Daimler Chrysler, Fiat Chrysler, uh, then just uh, Fiat Chrysler for a while, and finally Stellantis. So Stellantis is now a company that has 14 brands. It's been a hell of a ride, uh, but still, I'm at the end of it all, I'm a Mopar guy. Always have been. I grew up watching um, Dukes of Hazard and all that kind of stuff, Bullet, one of these, uh, anything that had a car in it, and today, Fast and Furious. I've watched every one of them maybe five times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I'm a car guy, but I'm an artist uh, also in my heart. Uh, so I love the art of industrial design, which is something I found uh, affection for when I was a kid, you know, and it started sketching all the time and didn't know you could make a job out of it. Yeah, and it turns out you're great at it. I mean, <laughs> the, the, the cars I think that you've designed really speak for themselves. Well, it's a teamwork. I mean, I think, yeah, there was a time when I was on the bench, so to speak, you know, sketching mm -hmm. cars every day. Uh, and then uh, about 2020, I got promoted to director. At that point, I was leading teams, you know, versus, uh, but I, was, I had the greatest job. I was running the uh, rear drive studio. So we're working on the 300 at the time, the mm -hmm. charge, the Magnum. Uh, and then we're like, wait a second, if you uh, kind of put a bigger motor in this thing and some nice sticky tires, you could have some SRT. So the SRT thing took off. But um, the, the big story is, is the Viper is one of the reasons I joined the company. I grew up watching the, the 96 Vipers, even before that, the original Viper, at the mm -hmm. auto show in Detroit. I went to school in 88 and it came out in 89. And I'm sitting there mouth agape watching this thing turning on the turntable. I'm like, Chrysler did that? You know, and just <laughs> And so I've had a love affair with Mopar. Before that, the Viper just, you know, uh, sweetened the deal. And then the mm -hmm. SRT assignment, the rear drive, I was hooked for life. So. <laughs> Absolutely. And then... Mm -hmm. On top of that, we also have a very interesting vehicle. This is more so on the hot rod side, but still kind of sticks to your Mopar roots, so to speak, as well. So can you tell us what we have sitting in front of us here? Yeah, so this is uh, nicknamed Hallucination. So it's kind of a play on words uh, with the inspiration of the latest generation of Mopars that were powered by Hellcat engines. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that it's really a, a mixture of things. So at first you think you're seeing a 1968 Charger, which it's heavily, heavily based on. Uh, but the deeper you look, it's got a lot of modern cues, and so it's kind of a, you know, your imagination's m messing with your mind in a way. But also what it is, it's a culmination of all of my favorite things. So the story goes, um, years ago I've been going to car meets all over, whether it's Carlisle, uh, LX Festival. I've always loved kind of walking among the foot footsteps of our owners, what, watching what, mm -hmm. how they uh, manifest their love for their cars, right? So I was at the, uh, the national show in California, and I stumbled on a car speed court just finished for a client, an unnamed client, a very successful construction guy in New York, mm -hmm. commissioned an all carbon fiber 1970, um, I think it was called uh, Evolution or something like that, I forget the name, I'll, you'll probably put a super on there and fix it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but it was, it was based on the 70. I liked the detailing and I, it, I never thought you could do something like that to a car that old, right? So, and there is underneath that car a, a true 1968 that was rebodied with carbon fiber. They put a supercharged uh, crate motor in there. Uh, I wanted something a little different. Uh, at the time I said I wanted, I didn't know how I was gonna afford it. And that was almost six years ago now. So it, it took a while to kind of make, put the funds together. But the project took three years. So it, you know, kind of, uh, it, it wasn't so painful doing it over that length of time. Uh, but this is a 68, which is my favorite. Uh, I love the front end. It's kind of almost has that harmonica look, you know, like a mm -hmm. simple design, really pure. And usually the first statement from a designer is the original statement. So this first one is the way it wanted to be. Uh, that's why I love it. But it has details like the hood scoop that's inspired by the, the red eyes and the demons, uh, specifically the demons, sorry. And a couple things we did, you know, or Speedcore worked on, is they, they really close all the gaps. So normally some of these gaps are much bigger. Um, this is now smaller, they kind of adjusted things. And the bumpers are what we call, they're Frenched in. So the bumpers are the original dimensions, but pushed into the body, so they're more or less flush. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. The rest of the car is dimensionally accurate. Um, a few other details, uh, the moldings are gone. So this is mounted like a modern day windshield, you know, got rid of the, the rubber molding. Uh, the gutters are also gone, uh, which actually makes the car a lot quieter, but looks cleaner. Um, but everything else is actually accurate. It just happens to be carbon fiber. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but uh, I give the, the team there a lot of credit because when you really look at it, most people think it's, it's a wrap sure. because there's a PPF coating on it that has to be uh, uh, kind of mended together. 
but, and they want, but it's actually real carbon fiber. It's not only real carbon fiber, it's baked. It's uh, autoclave, so it's the same oh, way so that you make, the same way it's made Properly a, reinforced then as well, strength -wise. Exactly, it's, it's strong, it's very durable. Uh, it bounces back a little bit. I have a little boo-boo here. I got one little rock chip, uh, but I kind of, you know, this car has 6,400 miles on it, so I'm proud of the fact that it's got, Properly a, driving. It's got a window chip. That's going to cost me a, a fortune, but, you know. <laughs> uh, but let's keep walking around it. So uh, a couple things you look at. So it was intended to be subtle. So, you know, some people have, why don't you do more to it? But I wanted it to, to almost look like a black car that was just lowered, mm -hmm. right, from about 20 feet away. Again, as you look at the details, um, this was inspired by the General Lee from Dukes of Hazard. So it's, it's an exaggerated version of the, the old turbine wheel that was on that car and the Grand National and other muscle cars around the time. Uh, but you know, we took some liberties and beautified them. HRE did a great job milling these out of billet aluminum. Uh, these are 19s, the rears are 20s. Uh, we put some serious track rubber. As much as I like muscle cars, I'm really a track guy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wanted something that could handle canyon roads, and you know I drive, you know I drive, you know let's say spiritedly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so these are Pilot Sports phenomenal tires: 265 in the front, uh, 245s in the back on 20-inch rims and 19s. The brakes are mono piston uh, Brembos with uh, six, sorry, mono block six piston Brembos. I think they're 15 and a half, almost 16 inch rotors, and they work. It's a good size. Yeah, I like brakes as much as horsepower. I think to <laughs> me, they're, they have to be equal. You know? It helps to stop once you get Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, might as well show you the engine since we're at front. Absolutely. So we made uh, the, the, the hood open to honor the Viper. So the most, ah. uh, except for the Gen uh, 3s, all the Vipers had um, you know, opposite opening hoods. So that, again, the team at Speedcore did an amazing job. There's barely any visible wiring except for some of the, the wiring that came with the uh, crepe motor. We, they did new covers, a new intake box, and really a custom engine bay that really shields the radiator, hides all the ancillary stuff. Uh, all the fluids are hiding underneath the bottles, the overflow, uh, phenomenal. But the engine is dead stock. It's uh, one of 100 uh, elephant engines, aluminum, Base 726, so it's one liter bigger than a, than a Red Eye or a Demon engine. Uh, puts out a thousand horsepower on pump gas, so I can run on 91 octane. If you put it on uh, ethanol or anything else, you can get well into the mid thousand, 2000, or uh, 1600 on up. Some guys claim, you know, claim they have 2000 horsepower. The bottom end was <laughs> designed by a drag, our drag team, the, our, our um, drag team, so the bottom end's super strong. It's, it's like built like a drag motor, so it's got a lot of bottom end strength to it. Uh, it's, it's attached to an eight speed. Um, I went back and forth, whether it's manual or eight-speed. There's only a handful of crate motors that are attached to, uh, actually, I think Corey, I mean, Kevin Hart's car is also an automatic, it's just like mine. Mm -hmm. um, it just makes cruising a lot easier. I have plenty of manual cars, but I like the, you know, the power delivery with a supercharged engine works. But I'm most proud of the interior, if we can check it out. Excuse my uh, <laughs> phone cable here. But fun story, I found this cable at O'Reilly's at Matches. I love that it matches. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, it matches just the car. By fluke. That's great. I'll say, I'll take three of them. Um, <laughs> uh, Gabe Customs out of California worked with Speedcorn, did an amazing job uh, trimming the Recaro seats to, to, you know, again, sit you in the car in a way that a 6'8 could never dream of, you know. Mm -hmm. They had those big bench type seats. These are really sporty seats. The steering wheel is, uh, is the same uh, rim section as the 68, but more a sporty diameter, smaller. Uh, again, that's billet. That's a little all, bit easier to wield. Yeah, and it's a power steering system, obviously. Um, so you don't need the circumference then. To, exactly, uh, and it just car. feels good. A lot of people, it's, that a handful of my friends have driven the car, and the steering wheel is their favorite part. It just feels so right. Uh, uh, 3D printed pedals, 3D printed uh, center console. A lot of cool details. Again, the more you look at it, you can appreciate. But otherwise, a simple color scheme, kind of a gray, a gray on gray with uh, exposed carbon fiber and then leather wrapped with the orange stitch. And the orange color you'll see on the calipers, uh, on my wires. <laughs> on so the is, is the orange color meant to be a homage to sort of Dukes of Hazard yeah, in a sense? Yeah, exactly. Or? There's okay. a bit of, of hint there. It's also kind of a performance color. And fun fact, you want to zoom in on the tack. My daughter uh, designed the gauges. So it's- Oh, uh, that's incredible. It's a elephant with the ears stretched back a little bit to show kind of speed. So we had a little fun with that. And there's details everywhere. I love the inserts for the, for the uh, five point harness. The seat's got these um, kind of anodized orange inserts. Yeah, it looks incredible. Yeah, and, the, and this roll cage, they did a great job. The roll cage is actually uh, welded to the body, but it's actually structural. So this cage, if you didn't have it, it wouldn't work, right? So the entire body is reinforced uh, with the floor pan, which is, which is a tub. 
It's actually a honeycomb matrix uh, tub, which gives the car incredible stiffness. And hiding in these sills is a box section chromoly frame that's glued, literally bonded permanently to the tub. So it, it kind of built a bit like a supercar. I was going to say, it's a pretty common practice yeah. to find on Lotuses and all sorts of cars. Yeah, and if you want to put the camera under the body, you know, real quick, you can see how flat the floor is. There's nothing hanging. Wow. Um, super clean. Uh, again, makes the car quieter. I didn't expect that benefit, but there's no uh, wind rush coming out of that. And uh, the center consoles, that's a one-piece milling, that entire rib structure. It's structural, gives it strength, but just looks really cool. <laughs> and it goes all the way through to the back. It does look really cool, I'll give you that. Um, the, we do have to answer one question, which yep. I know everybody's going to be wondering. So we pointed out this is, in fact, a carbon fiber car with lots mm -hmm. of other light weighting parts, so to speak. But mm -hmm. obviously, you still have a fair amount of luxuries. How much does this car weigh? Yeah, last time I put on the scales with about a quarter tank of gas, it was 3,850 pounds. Which is yeah. incredibly and light. People for expect the sheer size of yeah, the car. Yeah, it's an 18 foot long car. Some people expect it to be 3,400 pounds with all the carbon. but. Again, we added some luxuries. The engine's a little bit heavy, even though it's aluminum, but the wheels are actually heavier than a normal, uh, you know, let's say a 16 inch, 17 inch wheel would have been. Mm -hmm. And then there's a sound system. You can't see it because it's hidden underneath, but there's a large aluminum heat sink thing with three amps. I love my music. <laughs> so there's literally 250 pounds of sound equipment in the car and sound deadening. Yeah, so. well, I think you've more than made up for, let's say, the excess <laughs> weight with the power plant there. Yeah. And I mean, the wheels are obviously fairly durable too. We actually just came off yeah. the track uh, prior to this, which I'll show at the end of the video, but yeah. the wheels obviously hold up to G-forces and yeah. the extra added work of going on the track too. So I would say a little added weight doesn't hurt so much if yeah. they're durable and willing to hold and, up. There. And fun fact, I asked my team at work to just look at the, the data quickly because they can quit, throw it through what we call a validation tool that can tell if, the, if there's enough metal for the weight of the car mm -hmm. and it passed with flying colors. So it's actually a, a little overbuilt actually for, for the weight of the car. Uh, uh, did a unique uh, filler cap here, so all uh, chargers had this kind of fuel door. Mm -hmm. This just has a more unique uh, uh, look to it, a little less, more modern, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I love about 68s, besides the, the, the bullet hole uh, uh, lights on the side, I love the afterburner tail lamps. So, Iconic. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And back then, they changed them every year, so they went to the horizontal ones the next year, so this, my favorite, is the, the two round ones. Again, the cleanliness, the bumpers, again, pushed all the way in. So that it's flush to the body. It's actually quite unique. And normally the exhaust would be hanging down here and they're, mm -hmm. they're kind of like a speedboat. They're going through the, 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 the chassis of the car. Uh, the plate stands for carbon fiber 68. <laughs> it's real simple. Um, yeah, and that's really all there is to it. I mean, um, we really didn't change the dimensions of the car. It's the original 1968 uh, dimensions. The, the window is the same. It's one of my favorite features of 68 is the French tin. All of them had that, the French tin. Uh, window we just got rid of the rubber molding so it looks more modern yeah it looks incredibly sleek i do have yeah. to ask so what is the fastest that you know of that you've gotten this thing up to where you were willing to look down at the speedometer can't talk about that <laughs> <laughs> but on a racetrack i believe a hundred and uh, about 158 miles an hour yeah so this will move pretty yeah easily. oh yeah it'll it should do over 200 miles an hour easily um, <laughs> And I would do it on the Silver State Classic one day, so a race like that. One right, where you road. have the yeah, wide it's open. Perfect car for that. Um, and again, one of the features I love about the car, you know, even the production car, underneath, most of them had actually vinyl roofs. Mm -hmm. But when you don't have the vinyl roof, you appreciate this beautiful section, which you'll see in the modern day, the two, 2025 Charger. <laughs> actually, we, we were inspired by this. So I, I, I had the 68 parked inside the studio when we did the, uh, the new Charger that's coming out this year. Mm -hmm. Um, and you'll see a lot of hints from the 68, because a lot of Moparians, as I call it, still think of this as the granddaddy of Mopars in a way. Um, that and the, and the Challenger and Cuda, but that family, mm -hmm. that generation of Mopars were just the business. You know? Yeah, this, this bit in particular, I would say, is very reminiscent. Yeah. I mean, the overall shape of the car on both two-door and four-door versions of the upcoming yeah. car are very um, reminiscent of this, but do another, you know, similar to this in terms of making it more future or modern looking and then mm -hmm. push it a step further with what you guys are doing yeah. with the new cars. And I've been, uh, a lot of people seem to like the 68 and the char this generation Charger. I've been pulled over many, many times. Uh, but it's usually by police officers that want to look at just the car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they love the car. They, you know, they they just they open everything up, and we have a blast talking about the design of it and stuff. So, so I believe that. Fun. I believe yeah. that. That's that's incredible. <laughs> and then this car is so. Is it fully independent suspension or what all? So okay, the front is the uh, Detroit Speed. Um, okay. So it's a kit that you can get on any actually uh, any um, of these B bodies. Uh, it's a, it's a 
short long arm type suspension with a Penske coilovers on the front. On the back is a live axle. It's actually a custom made, narrowed. We had to narrow a, a um, aftermarket axle, but it has five links. It's all Heim jointed. Okay. So it's very stable. It has a four to nine inch, uh, three to one ratio gear, uh, aluminum uh, third member, I think they call it. And then uh, the big brakes, it's got the disc brakes on the back. Really simple, it works well. I thought the live axle would be a bit of an issue, but it, it works extremely well because the rubber is so good. It got plenty of traction. It's actually hard to lay rubber down with this car. It just wants to go. It's, it's very light and it just wants to fire off. Which is great for track use, as <laughs> yeah, you mentioned. Exactly. You prefer to but use, I'm so, so tempted one day to put uh, smaller wheels with wrinkle walls to see what it'll do. You know, <laughs> put some Mickey Thompsons or something on there to see what it'll do in a quarter mile. Yeah, that would be a cool uh, different look too, just yeah. for the sake of see what the photos look like and yeah. to change the stance of the car. But yeah, I, um, I do have to pull this in because I'm so proud of this. So I just got this last week from one of my friends who had a little Hot Wheels made of the car. So I'm like, I don't know which is worth more, this thing or that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's phenomenal that they were able to replicate yeah, it there. And uh, what is Hot Wheels, 164th, I believe, yeah, approximately? There's, there's a company, I guess, size. that does that as a kind of a gift thing, you know, so. Little that's, shout out to them. Good yeah, job. that's incredible. It's my neighbor, uh, Matt Ketchum, who lives here in Arizona. That is absolutely incredible. Cool. Um, so I'll go ahead and insert the track clips here so you guys can hear and see the car on track. But I also want to close it out. So Ralph, mm -hmm. obviously, thank you very much for walking yeah. us through your car awesome. here. Um, what would you like to talk about, I guess? What's what's the future for you and Stellantis and kind of what's going forward? Yeah, here? back to my day job. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, so my day job in my private life in terms of the enthusiasm for, for automobiles, I don't want that to ever go away. A lot of us are worried, you know, with electrification, are we gonna lose um, what makes cars special? So we're trying to balance that act, right? So with the new Charger, um, as people discover the car, it still will have an optional gas engine, a really awesome inline six, which may not have the rumble, let's say, but the performance will be, you know, mouth dropping. And the electric version will have its own character, right? Mm -hmm. So we're trying to find ways to respect where we've been, but also embrace the future. Um, and once people that experiment, or I've started to test some of the test cars, it's a different visceral experience. It's still visceral, it's just a little different, right? So I, I, we'll see what happens. Uh, the future is always, you never know. I remember back, I wasn't around, but I've heard stories of in the 70s, people thought, it's over, muscle cars are gone, and look at us now, right? So these things come in ebb and flow. So we're having, uh, uh, it's a head scratcher as we develop the future, but we know that if we, it comes from a place of passion, the output will be passionate. And that's what I'm working on now is, is passionate product that's still, um, uh, keeps that DNA strain going that started way before my time and I, I respect it. If I'm in love with it still after 55 years, I want someone to love what we do 50 years from now, right? So that's yeah. the way I think. I mean, I think the enthusiasm from you is clear, right? I mean, look <laughs> at the car that you have behind you here. So it's, it's clear that it comes from a place of passion for yeah. what you guys are building going yeah. forward. And you even post a lot of what you're doing on social media as well, mm -hmm. both on the Slantis mm -hmm. side and some of your personal cars, like the Speedcore hallucination car we have here mm -hmm. as well, right? Yeah, it's one of the same. I'm, I'm the same person at work as I am in, in my private life. So it's it's a problem for some. The finance community <laughs> hates me. You know? <laughs> but again, there's it's just not me. I mean. The the whole company has people in engineering like that, in, in uh, all in the brands themselves. The brand's doing a great job. I think Dodge is an awesome, Tim Kaniskas and his team. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a family affair. You know, I really, I'm, I'm just happy to be part of it. You know, when I was a kid, I looked up to Mopar as a company that was just cool and to be part of its story somehow, some way is an honor and it'll always be. So I'm very grateful for my career uh, and I hope whatever I leave behind, I, I left it better than I found it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so with that, that's going to be the end of the video. Again, thanks again, Ralph, I Take appreciate care. it. If you guys enjoyed the video, could hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. Of course, get subscribed for more content like this, and of course, I'll see you guys in the next one.
accelerate, there's so much uh, torque it goes away from the pickup. Ah, uh, that so makes sense. That's what's going on. So we're going to have to be a little careful there. So I kind of designed the car to handle. It's got like a all Penske coilovers, big sway bars. Yeah, it definitely doesn't drive like a 60s car. Yeah, it's definitely starving a little bit. I put uh, basically Porsche RS spec tires on it, so it's got the Michelin Sport Cup pilots. No, those are pretty sticky. Yeah, so these are, um, the rear tires are out of production, so I'm a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a 20, it used to be on the Bugatti Veyron, it's a 245, 20. Okay. And they moved on to a 21, so they don't make my bought three sets, I got them in bags. I don't do bird nuts anymore. <laughs> Which is the first time Speedcore did it on my car. Um, so that 
that allowed us to really raise the transmission as high as possible. So this tunnel is way, way taller than a normal 68 would be. So, so it's, we kind of lowered the car and lifted the drivetrain at the same time. 